I had a vision and a dream a few months back that did not appear to go along with anything I was learning at the time, although they seemed pretty easy to interpret. Now I'm going to use my friend Lisa in this video as an example, and if you've not read her visions about bombs and earthquakes and stadiums blowing up, you really need to, so I will post the link below and also in the transcript. Lisa's mom is selling her home. Now she gave away many of her things last year, including her good silverware. When my mom moved up from Florida last year, I too asked if I could have my mom's silverware. She always kept it very sparkling, clean, and organized, and that may sound funny, but I'm a very organized person, and so I didn't even know silverware could be this organized. When I saw it, it was like, oh, I gotta have it. So, that's my mom's silverware, which I now own, and I keep in the same condition because it's just, it makes me happy, you know? It makes me feel good, okay. So, now the vision I had was uh, a couple months ago was of that same silverware. And this is what I saw in the vision. Total chaos and disarray of my silverware. And I didn't know what it meant other than it seemed, it seemed obvious at the time that it was my walk before Jesus and then the other cleaned up silverware was my walk after Jesus. But that's not what God led me to believe. He just left it, I just left it alone for a while because he didn't give me any clear indication. Then I had a dream. It seemed to parallel the vision. In my dream, I opened the door to a large closet and saw my shoes nicely in a row. God was even being humorous in this dream because he put my wedding tennis shoes first. And I have a video on those shoes from a while back, so I'll post that below as well. Above my shoes were some clothes, so that indicated to me during the dream that it was a closet. Behind my shoes and to the left were my husband's shoes. They were in disarray, scattered everywhere and not in any kind of order. As I woke up, again my thought was, okay, he's lukewarm, his shoes are not in order. This is before Christ versus after Christ, so he's kind of lukewarm. In both the silverware vision and the dream, all the elements of the organized collections were also in the disorganized collections, the silverware and the shoes. While I didn't know it, this vision and dream were not about our lives before and after Christ. Until I spoke with Lisa yesterday, it did not dawn on me what they were. God showed me that they're about the path we are on, everyone's individual path. And that's why I have this video of what I call my Jesus jugs, because I love the, this little water fountain that I found. They remind me of the jugs used in Jesus' day. And if I arrange the rocks differently, it trickles. There's a trickling sound. You might hear a hum right now. <coughs> or a cough. Sorry. But if I put the trickling sound on, it might distract you. So hopefully this is, this is about the path, though. And I kind of see that in this water. It's just very neat and organized. So, okay, all our elements of our walk with Christ are there. Christ is there before we come to him. He is right there with us all the time. The Bible is always available to us. Prayer is available to us, at least in America and in most countries. These things, the Bible is available to us. But until we choose Christ with our free will and follow through with the relationship, it's, it is disorganized. Once we choose him, our lives are not immediately cleaned up. For most people, our focus is not right away on Christ. God leads us over time to turn to him. If we turn away, then he gently guides us back. Well, sometimes gently, sometimes not so gently. Lisa's mom is like my husband. And by the way, she gave me permission to post this about her. She, she was able to read it. So Lisa's mom is like my husband. And many of you have family just like this, so you can relate. They know what's going on in the world because they have family members, like Lisa and me and you, pointing it out to them. They may even take a few steps to go along with us. Lisa's mom and my husband are helping with prepping to a small extent. We are fortunate in that they are listening to us in some degree. Is that because of us? No. It's because God is turning their head. We pray for our family members and friends, and God uses our prayers to accomplish His will. And I think this is the same for all of us right now because, of course, we want our family members and friends to go to heaven. Lisa spent much of her Christmas break helping her mom pack up her house and give things away. 
her mother is starting to focus more on the narrow path rather than a wide path. The more the media reports catastrophic events on television, the more my husband nods his head and starts thinking about the end. He too is narrowing his path. This is the path God wants for them. The one that leads straight to him rather than the one with rocks and cracks and pains for them to go through. They'll still find him, but it's much more painful. God is organizing their silverware and straightening their shoes. They are getting right with God, so to speak. The path is narrowing, but it is also becoming more focused. The elements were always there. God has been telling us for the past several months now to get in step with him. Last night, when I was speaking with him, he gave me a direct order to lean on him over the next 30 days. Now, he also said, quote, My shadow covers you, and my wings go round about you. I hold you in my arms and hug you like a good father. I am that I am, and I comfort you. Lean on me. End quote. So that made me think twice. Wait, does God have a shadow? Oh yes, Hosea 14.7 says, Those who live in his shadow will again raise grain, and they will blossom like the vine. His renown will be like the wine of Lebanon. So that is an end time statement. And who hasn't read Psalm 91 by this point? which the first verse says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So there you have shadows. My directive was to lean, and is to lean on him. Now, rather than try to figure out how I'm supposed to do that, which would be all complicated, and I'd have to research and look at videos and try to figure it out, no, no, no. I simply say, Yes, Lord, allow me to lean on you, and direct me as to how to do that. Now, it may be that catastrophic events will happen in 30 days. I don't know. It may be that nothing prophetic happens in 30 days. If no cat catastrophes happen, I'll become disappointed, just like everybody else. So even then, I am to lean on him through my disappointment. So I'll give that up to God as well. I really don't know how to do this stuff he tells me to do, so other than to just speak it out loud and tell God I'm giving it to him. Yet when we do this, things happen in the spirit realm that we know nothing about. So we have faith that what we do is what we are supposed to do. It is the new year, and I did not make any resolutions. But yesterday, Barb put out a video called Learn My Way of Love from God. At the end, God says something that struck a nerve in me, and I know that for me... It is a resolution that I need to work on. It is another directive that will narrow my path and cause me to focus more on being like Jesus. What I learned is that the first reaction I should have to anyone I meet is love. That is what Jesus would do. There is a lot to be said for those small bracelets that have the initials WWJD on them as a reminder of what would Jesus do. And as a side note, if you've not read the story of what inspired What Would Jesus Do, I recommend you do so, and I'll put a link there for that. So for me, over the next 30 days, I'm going to try to put love first as my reaction to people, and this will be difficult, especially at work. But that's what I was given to do, and that's what we were given in the video to do. And in order to put this first, I have to lean on him because, like I just said, that's going to be difficult. We cannot fail in our individual paths if our heart belongs to God. We are all different because God likes variety. I like that about him. Even the snowflakes are never the same. God is into variety to the nth degree. So what a cool God. You can know for sure that the path he has set for you is perfect no matter what happens on it. Go to him today and ask him what he would like you to do to include or get rid of in order to follow closer to him. Now, my daughter does not read the Bible much or pray, yet what she's doing to help her is turning off the television for 21 days. This is something her church is doing. So this forces her to have more time in her life uh, to hear. So that's the right thing she's going to do for her. And believe me, her turning that TV off is hard for her. So God is clearing her path of clutter giving her some space so she can turn to him, whether it's Bible reading or prayer or worshiping in another way. I'm going to wrap this up by saying that each of us needs to do what God tells us and shows us. If you do not hear him speak in that still small voice, 
Do you think that means he is not talking to you? No, it does not. Again, if your heart is right with him, he will show you things and the way he wants you to walk. Now, my friend Teresa, who is Seek and Ye Shall Find channel on YouTube, said in a recent video that she does not follow a pattern of reading the Bible. She prays first and asks God to show her what he wants her to study, then opens her Bible to whatever it falls on. Teresa's heart is given over to the teacher, and she has the faith that when she opens the Bible, that's what she is to study. If you have followed her videos and teachings, they are profound. My pattern of reading the Bible is totally different in that I, I like to read things in chronological order for the most part. At times I'll read an entire book like Isaiah or I listen to books uh, on tape on the way to work. It doesn't matter what I do or what Teresa does or anybody else. Only that we obey God. Same with you. You're no different. We're all the same. We're all the bride. We're a variety, but we're different. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I hope that makes sense. We are in unity as the bride, but we're all on an individual path. Allow him to unclutter your life by simply asking God to show you what he wants you to do. Even if that is to rest in him fully and do absolutely nothing. Let him organize your closet, and he will. He is the good father who is for us, not against us. This is a new year and a renewed time to follow Jesus more closely. We are getting more instructions now on what will happen this year. You can only improve your walk with Christ by removing some impediments and allowing him to direct your path then you will be very aware of what his purpose is for you in the coming days. Shalom.